Hi everyone. So in a recent YouTube live, I showed you how to make envelopes in Canvas Workspace online. And I was trying to show you how you could get the biggest size envelope by using this simple technique using basic shapes. And all these envelopes here were what I made in the recent live. <clears throat> so this is for a five by, I started off with this one. This is a, for a five by seven envelope. And this has just got sim simple rectangular flaps. And then the inside pieces are just at like a half inch strip. Then I explained how you could shape the envelope to give it, you know, to make it look a little bit better. This one is a for a five and a half, I think, or five 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 card, I can't remember. I didn't show how to make this one, but using the same principles that I showed in the live stream, you can make that. And then I showed how you could make an envelope big enough to fit an eight by eight card with wiggle room in it. So it's about eight and a quarter by eight and a quarter. And to do this one, you have to make it in two sections. But again, using the you know, little small over flaps on the side, you can get bigger envelopes cut by your scan and cut. So once I'd done that, my lovely internet friend Susan messaged me and said, why don't you try measuring your card on the diagonal and add an inch on? And that will then give you the size that you need to create the square to make your envelope. And it makes sense she was always far more cleverer than me. And it, and it does make sense because if you look at an envelope punch board, this is my old stamping up one. It's um, a We Are Memory Keepers and there's others on the market. No matter what size card is on here, the paper that you cut it with always starts off with a square. As soon as she said to me, measure on the diagonal, it kind of all fell into place. So this is what I've been making this morning, and I'm going to show you how to do this in Canvas Workspace. And these are the more, what I would call a traditional style envelope. So with your triangular, you know, flaps. So this one is for a five by five card. And again, they've got the wiggle room. So if you've got any dimension on the front of your card, then, you know, these are all going to fit. So that's my five by five envelope. This is one I've made for a three and a half by three and a half inch card. This one is for, for our UK A6 size card, which is five and seven eighths by four and an eighth. So again, you can see that this fits in nicely. It's got the dimension with the flowers on the top and that all fits in nicely. This one is for a five by seven card which is the same size as the one I showed you how to make in canvas workspace but mine you know is done with the simple skinny side flaps this one is done with the more traditional style so if you prefer that then you'll learn how to make that in the video today and there's the card going in just got my letters stuck there OK, so that's another one. Then this one, I've taken a piece of UK A4 card, which measure, measures 11.75, so 11 and three quarters of an inch by eight and a quarter. I've scored it in half and folded it, and I was able to make an envelope big enough for that using canvas workspace and cut it with a scan and cut machine. Now using this triangular style flaps, this is, I would say, the biggest you can make using this design. But if you go back and look at the playlist and find, find the live stream playlist, you'd be able to make an eight by eight envelope using this technique. So the two techniques are gonna work side by side and if you watch both videos, hopefully you'll have a good understanding of how to make an envelope any size and any shape. So the last one I want to show you is I've taken a piece of UK A4 card, which is eight and a quarter, and I cut it by eight and scored it at four. So I've now got, I've put the wrong measurement on here. So I've now got four by eight and a quarter. And using the same principle, I've been able to make, we call this 
a DL style card in the UK. I think some people call them slimline cards. And they seem to be having a bit of a, a comeback. I used to make slimline cards when I first started paper crafting about 16, 17 or so years ago. And they, they seem to be making a comeback now. So again, using the same principle I'm going to show you today, I was able to make an envelope. Now, the only thing I would say with this is with having the triangular flaps, this is too big here for the card. So you'd have to fold it and cut it or fold it and stick it down. And then the same here, when this one comes over, it's too long. So again, you just need to, you know, trim a bit off. But the envelope fits in comfortably with a bit of wiggle room. And then that is your envelope. And then if you go back to the live stream I did several weeks ago, where I showed you how to make stickers using Canva and then cut them with your scan and cut, you could seal these all with your stickers. So they, there are all the envelopes that I've made. So if you want to know how to do this, keep watching. Okay, so I'm in Canvas Workspace Online and the first envelope I'm going to show you how to make is for a five by seven card. Now what you want to do, no matter what size your card base is, you need to measure it, measure it diagonally from corner to corner. So a five by seven card measures eight and a half inches diagonally. You want to add one inch onto that. So that gives you nine and a half. So the first thing that you need to do is come over to your basic shapes, grab yourself a square, come to your properties and make a square that is nine and a half by nine and a half. So just to recap, five by seven envelope measures eight and a half inches on the diagonal. So from corner to corner, you take the eight and a half inches and add on one inch and that builds in your wiggle room. So that gives you nine and a half. We need to start off with a square. So the square is nine and a half by nine and a half. Then with it selected, I'm going to come to the properties box and I'm going to rotate it 45 degrees doesn't matter that it hangs off the page at the moment. So now we need a rectangle that's going to represent the card. So the card is five by seven. So I'm going to untick maintain aspect ratio, but I'm going to build in some wiggle room for my dash line and I'm going to build in a quarter of an inch. So my five by seven card is going to make me a dashed fold line of 5.25 by 7.25. So if I type 5.25 in here and hit enter, and then 7.25 here, okay? And this is how I showed you how to do in the live stream. This was built what I call building in the wiggle room. With this now selected, I'm going to come down to the bottom and choose a dashed line. So I can close the properties box now. So I'm going to bring them both together, select them both and come to edit a line on the center and edit a line on the horizontal. And while they're selected, I'm gonna right click and make them a group. So that is now my envelope and obviously it hangs off the page. So now you just need to rotate it back 45 degrees. So you can either hold your shift key down and use the arrow or you can come back to your properties box and rotate it 45 degrees. And now the box that was hanging off your mat now fits. It doesn't matter about the bounding box. When you click away, that doesn't show up. So this is now a five by seven envelope. So you would give it a name up here and save it in your projects. That's a nice easy one. So I'm just going to get rid of that and we'll do another one. So in the UK, we use what's called an A6 card. And that's half of our UK A4. But our UK A4 is 11 and three quarters by eight and a quarter. So when we cut that in half to then make our A6 card, our A6 card becomes four and an eighth by five and seven eighths. So again, if you measure that card on the diagonal, you'll get seven inches. Add an inch on gives you eight. So we know we want an eight by eight inch square. So again, I'm going to tick maintain aspect ratio. I'm going to type eight and hit enter. 
and that gives me the square. Again, I can either rotate it using the handle or I can just come to the properties box, say 45 degrees and hit enter. Now, I'm going to bring my card on. So, my card measures 4 and 1 8 by 5 and 7 8 To build in my quarter inch wiggle room, my, my dash line needs to be basically 4 and 3 8 by six and an eighth, which in decimal is from my box back in. I'm going to untick maintain aspect ratio. So in decimal, that is 4.37 by 6.12. And again, while I've got the size here, I'm going to come down to the bottom. I'm going to choose dashed and make that a dash line. So again, I'm just going to line it up over the top of this one select both, go edit a line on the center and edit a line on the vertical, right click and group and there is my envelope for my UK A6 card. Again, you can rotate it back, give it a name and save it and then you can download it. So now I'm going to show you how to make an envelope for a 5 by 5 inch card. If you measure a five by five inch card on the diagonal, it measures seven inches. So again, you add your one inch on, which gives you eight. So we know now we need to start with an eight by eight inch square. So I'm going to bring the square onto my page, come to the properties with the maintain aspect ratio selected. I'm going to say eight and hit enter. That gives me the square while I'm here. I'm going to rotate it 45 degrees and hit enter. And now I need to make the dash lines that are a little bit bigger than the five by five. So I've been using a quarter of an inch. Again, it's up to you. You can play about with this and use whatever you want, but a quarter inch seems to work on all sizes for me. So if my card is five by five and I want to build a quarter inch wiggle room for my dash line. I'm going to make my dash line 5.25 by 5.25. While I'm still in the properties box and I've got it selected, I'm going to come down to the bottom and choose my dash line. And I'll just close that out for now. So I can bring this in, select them both, and again come to edit. And under align, I can align them on the horizontal and on the vertical. So that's basically centre, centre with them both still selected, group. Now again, you can see that this one just about fits on the 12 by 12, but if you rotate it 45 degrees and click away, it now comfortably fits on your mat. Again, you would give this a, you know, give it a name up here, five by five envelope, whatever you want to call it, save it here, which this is your save box, and then download it or transfer it wirelessly to your machine and cut it. So that's how you can make a traditional style envelope of more or less any size with the traditional triangular shape flaps. But the biggest envelope I've been able to make using this system is the Half UK A4, which uses, I think, 11 by 11 as the starting square. But if you want to make something bigger, if you go here on my channel and go to the playlists and go and find the live stream playlist and look for Sunday the 11th of April, you'll find a, a live stream I did showing you how to make an 8 by 8 envelope that you could make in two sections. And again, using that principle, you could probably even make bigger. So the two um, videos, today's video and the live stream from the 11th of April are going to work hand in hand and hopefully we'll have you covered to be able to make an envelope of any size. And th this is great for using up all that 12 by 12 single sided scrapbook paper that you know we all hoard and we've all probably got in our stash and we never use it. And you can make envelopes now in pattern paper that will just dress up your cards. Then if you also go to the channel and go to the Canva playlist, several weeks ago I showed you how to make stickers in Canva 
and how to print them and then cut them with your scan and cut and you can use those stickers to seal all your envelopes. So I hope you found that helpful. Please give the video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. I am trying to get to 50,000 subscribers by the end of the year. YouTube are telling me that about 40 something percent of the people that watch my videos are not subscribed. So please subscribe. Help me get to 50,000 subscribers and then when I get there I'm going to be doing some giveaways. Anyway, I hope you found that helpful and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.